You're oppressing me. How am I oppressing you? What's this? What color is that? Huh? You see, there's no question that systemic racism has created oppression of minorities in our country. So the way to help them rise up is by squashing these people over here. And then you have equality, as you can see. It's kind of like if someone falls down, the best way to help them up is to run over and lay down next to them. After studying Robin DiAngelo's work, I learned only white people can solve problems for minorities. The solution is anti-racism. The definition of racism is discrimination or prejudice based on race. And our definition of anti-racism is the same. So this is what we're doing because we want to solve this problem. Does that make sense? You know, it's funny because it's partly true. And I think it's fair to say these Coca-Cola racial bias trainings are definitely getting a little out of hand. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okadowski of WeAreChange.org. My goodness gracious, lots of utter nonsense happening right now as we're speaking, especially with the larger showdown happening right now between the federal government and Joe Biden against, of course, Texas and Mississippi. Lots of context to provide here, along, of course, with more national security theater that is absolutely ridiculous. Now, before we do that, plus a lot more, the small clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was a clip from Awaken with JP. If you want to see the full video, the link is down in the description. And uh, I definitely think he uh, hit the nail on the head with his latest video. Now, as an independent media organization, we wanted to remind you of a very special anniversary happening right now. It's very similar to Groundhog's Day, except it's called the changing of the guard that usually happens every four or eight years. And that, of course, is when small government conservatives finally come out of their cave, passing, of course, the anti-war leftists that are now going into hiding for yet another four years. One of nature's greatest migrations is happening right now. And as independent media, we feel it's our duty to remind you that this is happening right now. Another important reminder is that big bloated government bureaucracy is not your friend as exemplified by the recent events that unfolded in Michigan, where a family farm was raided and the owner who was helping animals rehabilitate and heal was arrested by police officers who then commissioned her animals that she was rescuing to be exterminated all because she didn't have the right permits. The lady that was affected is doing a GoFundMe as we are speaking right now. We, of course, will be linking it down below. As, of course, this is one out of many examples to how absolutely absurd government can be. Now, with the government's not going after small defenseless animals, it's now going after made-up imaginary fairy tale threats like the latest one that we're hearing online with theories that somehow tomorrow Donald Trump will become president of the United States. These theories are being treated at the utmost importance of the national security state that literally is treating this seriously by issuing an emergency alert and preparing thousands of National Guard troops to be on the ready for the, quote, March 4th plot, which will eventually lead to absolutely nothing. There's not going to be any protest. There's not going to be any ridiculousness. And again, this is just the national security state saber rattling and flexing their power at absolutely nothing. The same national security state that, by the way, literally and figuratively looked the other way on January 6th as it came out that the FBI director didn't read the memo warning him of the large-scale protests that were on Facebook planning to enter the Capitol before January 6th. Other imaginary made-up threats that the government is fighting is, of course, for your freedoms that are somehow involved in Syria, entangled with a lot of oil deals and military-industrial complex and really bad rebel groups that we gave a lot of arms and weapons to, including money as well. As we're also finding out today that the Biden administration still has not briefed the top senators on why it decided to attack Syria. Why, of course, the Secretary of State just released a statement saying that, quote, the world doesn't organize itself. And as the government indiscriminately bombs foreign countries, they are fighting the true evil in the United States. And that, of course, is 
Dr. Seuss books for, quote, inappropriate content. Meanwhile, this is the same presidency that, of course, closely aligned with individuals like Cardi B that do unspeakable things that even if I would dare to talk about, I would get absolutely demonetized, probably even banned if I even just talked about what she does on her own YouTube videos, which, of course, are promoted and trending on this platform. So, yeah, let's just say that uh, there definitely is a double standard here when it comes to alternative independent media that don't just push for the social larger destruction of the youth with, of course, the support of the establishment. Yeah, that's a mouthful there. Sorry for that. I just can't hold back. I have so many ideas. I have so many things I want to say. And one of the ways that I express them is, of course, through my T-shirts. Since, of course, after being demonetized, I was like, man, I got to survive somehow. And what I started to do is make T-shirts like the one that I'm wearing right now, which is attributed to George Orwell. And if you want to support me and check out the shirts we got Go check out thebestpoliticalshirts.com. We just launched a new shirt a couple days ago. This is uh, an homage to, of course, George Bush, Henry Kissinger, Joe Biden. We got another one dropping today. Don't forget to check out thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Click on it right now. We have socks, we have hats, you name it, we got it. I have so many ideas. I have to just literally try to get as many of them as I can. We still have a list of about 10 t-shirts that I want to make as of right now. Phone cases, bandanas, you name it, we got it. Right now, thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Click in the description. Also, getting rave reviews about the exclusive content that you could only get on LukeUncensored.com. Yep, LukeUncensored.com is a thing. 50 cents a day, costs you nothing. I'm going to be doing my third video this week on uh, all the things that I can't say here or I would be censored for. So yeah, LukeUncensored.com if you're interested in that. And now, jumping into our main story, and that, of course, is the major showdown that is happening between the federal government and states like Mississippi and Texas that just announced that they are lifting all restrictions, all lockdowns, all mandates on their citizens and allowing businesses, schools, restaurants, and bars, if they choose to, to open and to run at any capacity that they want. Now, this has been met by a lot of criticism, especially by the federal government, especially by a lot of leftists that are saying this is wrong. This is bad. President Biden said that Americans should be acting aggressively against the sickness. But it, it definitely feels like uh, a lot of people are tired of having too much government in their lives. I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. But very interestingly, a lot of this is happening on, of course, the backdrop of a large number of cases of hospitalizations and deaths going dramatically down, not just in the United States, but all over the world. Many experts say that this is not because of the shot. But something else that, of course, we can't explain. Some people are saying that we are already very close to herd immunity. Again, a lot of this is still unknown. We don't know for sure exactly what's going on here, which is something that, that we need to tell people. We need to level with people and make them understand like, hey, the government and experts don't always know everything that, that's going on. It's important to have an open mind and to look at evidence and critically decide what's going on and understand that there might be a period where there might not be any certainty. Life, there's no certainty. We just have to accept it and stop acting like the world is going to end unless we certainly know what's going on because we don't. And from the very beginning of this, we never really did. Now, along with Texas and Mississippi, it's also important to note that Michigan and Louisiana has also decided to relax rules on bars and restaurants. Massachusetts has lifted restrictions on capacity. South Carolina erased limits on gatherings. All of this correlated with a huge drop in, in numbers of people who are getting sick. So, so yes, you, you obviously would, would do that. There's no need to continue to punish people, especially with the risk going dramatically down and the risk being very low from the very beginning. And a lot of people in these states, specifically Texas and Mississippi and others, will understand that their health is in their hands and not some big fat cat bureaucrat government official that is using the situation for his or her own political power. Again, the, the number's dramatically down. Soon, concerts will be allowed to reopen at full capacity. Masks no longer required. And 
I think this is going to spur a lot of people to move to places like Texas and Mississippi even more than they did before. As of course, from what I'm seeing, the general consensus is that this is a very popular move. But Joe Biden, on the other hand, has a totally different approach. This is, by the way, the same person who instituted a mask mandate in federal buildings on the same day that he decided not to wear a mask inside of a federal building during a big ceremony. This man, Joe Biden, released a statement today saying officially himself that he hopes next year, yes, next year, everything is going to go, quote, back to normal. Yes, that's the timeline that the current U.S. president has. Obviously, the total and opposite approach of some local states that are saying we, we've had enough of this. Now, of course, it's important to note here that some people do support the president on his perspective and the way he's handling this. Individuals like Michael Moore that, of course, are attacking states like Texas because of this move. And very interestingly, as I pointed out, it does seem like a lot of the people outraged by the latest moves by Mississippi and Texas usually are the same ones who didn't say anything and don't give a damn about the huge number of, of casualties caused by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and his nursing home policy that he personally instituted in 2020. He also personally instituted less liability for them, and his policy became the state that created the most amount of loss of life. His policies of, of course, very strict lockdowns, which are showing to have very severe ramifications, not just on this country's population, but also the youngest of them, the future generation of this country that shows that self-harm cases have risen 333%. Overdoses have risen 120% amongst people that are between the ages of 13 and 18 years old. Now, this article is claiming that this sickness has had a shocking toll on the youngest of this country, but in reality, we have to understand the government actions have had a tremendous negative effect on the children of this country, including even a teacher's union president that literally is calling for schools to be closed as he personally himself takes his daughter to private school. Yeah, a lot of people are just uh, sick and tired of the hypocrisy of these people setting up rules that, of course, they never follow themselves. A lot of fat cat bureaucrats, government officials, people who usually get a check from the American taxpayer that is unaccountable, that is not privy to the free market with fair market competition. Those individuals are usually the ones calling for the strictest lockdowns when they don't follow it themselves. Again, the consequences are not just amongst our young children with, with the mental health crisis rising amongst them, but also amongst adults that are facing similar problems. And many hospitals are seeing a huge increase, some of them 34% in patients who are suffering from, of course, alcoholism, which many people have turned to to deal with not the sickness, but the government's response to the sickness. Again, a very important talking point here. The problems that were created uh, as of 2020 were not created because of a sickness. They were created because of a government's response to that sickness, which many people will soon see was extremely disappropriate to the actual situation that we were dealing with. Now, to the people who are freaking out with this news coming from Texas and Mississippi, people need to understand that they still have the freedom to treat this sickness as they want to. If they want to quarantine, if they want to lock down, if they want to take a shot, they, they can do that. In New York, there's people lining up overnight to be the first people to get to this new single shot Johnson & Johnson that is a part of their pilot program that has shown uh, mixed results on this. People still have the freedom to do this. Now, in my opinion, I definitely see it a lot different than they do and have a different perspective and understanding after, of course, following the story very closely since last year. It's also important to note that Texas isn't alone, as, of course, 15 states also have very similar policies and currently don't have any statewide mask mandates. Another thing to really consider is that a lot of this policing of, of everyday life, of individuals walking, sitting on park benches, of doing everyday normal activities is unmanageable, even according to the chairman of the Metropolitan Police Federation in the United Kingdom, that said that, quote, police will no longer want to break up groups outdoors as these restrictions are unmanageable and police officers are refusing 
and police officers are refusing to enforce a lot of their draconian, absolutely backwards, totally insane, made-up decrees by politicians that don't follow them themselves. Still, other states like New York are pushing for more controls, more restrictions, more checkpoints, and even a shot passport as they're trying to launch a new program that would make it mandatory to enter venues, which again, there's a lot of problems surrounding this. I'm actually going to be talking about it on the backup channel, LukeUncensored.com, specifically about this very issue. In New Mexico, we have one of the first lawsuits against, of course, a state trying to force the shot on a corrections officer. This is going to be a very important court case to follow since, of course, it's going to set president in the United States which is why we're going to be keeping a close eye on it as this court case develops. Meanwhile, there's other things that people are finding out as reported by a local news agency in Houston that's reporting that this shot is causing some people to have side effects that's causing false positive cancer screenings. What's causing this? Why is this happening? Well, um, we still don't know, but it's important to point out that this shot was rushed, it's experimental, and there have been no long-term studies done on it so far. A lot of people obviously have questions, they have some skepticism, since of course a lot of the government and official expert talking points have been flip-flopping a lot. And by and large, I think it's fair to say that the establishment has been ignoring things like vitamin D, which a new medical study showed that having insufficient levels of vitamin D may account for almost 9 out of 10 deaths related to this sickness. And if you remember as independent media, we were even looking at some of the scientific studies months and months ago last year, specifically telling you, hey, this vitamin D thing is very promising. This is something, of course, a policy that has been instituted by countries like India that have been using vitamin D in treatments. And the fact that that country, India, that has barely any social distancing and very poor sanitation dealt with this a lot better than most Western countries really does tell you something. Now, who will prevail, the federal government and states like New York or states like Texas and Mississippi that are doing the opposite approach. Well, time will tell, but I think it's fairly certain to say that the situation will unfold like it did in Sweden. But now also on the backdrop of the numbers declining dramatically, I don't think it's even going to be that significant since some doctors are saying that we are on the verge of beating this. Again, that is their own personal opinion. What is your personal opinion? Well, you got to make it up after looking at all the facts and all the evidence and deciding yourself after doing an amazing, important thing called critical thinking, which, of course, everyone tries to make sure you don't do. Because when you do it, you usually realize how you're getting screwed. I don't like you getting screwed. I don't like you getting a swabbed, internally shoved into you three inches deep. We're going to be talking about this in the backup channel. Luke uncensored. Luke uncensored. I can't talk about this. It happened to, of course, a lot of Japanese citizens, American diplomats. What China's doing is absolutely outrageous. But they are setting the stage to go along with this larger New York, Joe Biden, federal government, big nanny state, big brother government that, of course, should be called out and countered with evidence that suggests that it's actually not that good as many people claim or think it is. That's my own personal opinion. If you think I'm wrong in any way, shape, or form, please let me know down in the description below. I love and appreciate constructive criticism. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you going to LukeUncensored.com and watching the new almost daily videos that I'm doing for you exclusively on Luke Uncensored. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. Love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.